Hi, everybody. It's Susan again. Um, I really felt the Lord wanting me to speak about fornication, also known as sex before marriage. So I have plenty of scriptures here and a couple of other things to um, share with you guys because it's important for your walk with God. So let's just open in prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you would choose to use someone like me to share your word and your truth with all these people out here that you love and that you are fighting for. I pray, Father, that your words would flow through me, your truth be known, all glory goes to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so in any of these videos that I make, I just want to put it out there that in no way, shape, or form am I pointing a finger at anybody, am I saying you're wrong or I'm judging you. I am simply bringing you information because it's necessary. In all of my videos that I'm going to make, nine out of ten times, I'm going to have some personal experience with it that I'm not being judging and I'm not being a hypocrite, that I actually have firsthand experience in this topic my whole life. Um, my entire adult life, I, I had plenty of sex before marriage. I have three children. I've had been pregnant seven times and I've never been married. So what does that tell you? Um, I lived a very promiscuous lifestyle. I justified it in any which may, any which means that I could think of, that I could convince myself it was okay. Um, but most importantly, it was definitely accepted in the world around me, amongst my peers, amongst my friends, society. It's just accepted. It's just normal. Well, I am here to change that in any way, shape, or form to anybody who will listen that the devil is a liar. And since the beginning, he has been lying to us. Since the beginning, Adam and Eve in the garden, the devil came to Eve and he lied to her. He said, you will not die if you eat of the fruit. Now he meant you will not fall over dead. But what the twist of the lie was, is that God said, if you eat that, you surely will die. And he meant eternal death because they were spirit beings and they were without sin. So already they were going to live eternally. Once they came into sin, then their spirit had the potential to go to hell and have eternal death. So yeah, Satan, he could he can twist the truth to make it sound good, but in the end, he's always a liar. So straight out the gate, he lied to Adam and Eve, and that's how they got kicked out of the garden. And uh, that's that is Satan's weapon is lies. So it's very important that you know God's truth because Satan will constantly lie to you all throughout your life. And if you don't know the truth, God's truth in the Bible. You're going to fall for any lie that he tells you. So it's important that you know the truth. And I am here to share the truth and to give you bits of information that you probably didn't know. I'm not telling you you're a bad person. I'm not telling you, you know, you're wrong or blah, blah, blah. I'm just simply sharing information because the Bible says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So it's time that we educate ourselves. And I'm here to help you in any way that I can because I love you and I care about all of you. All right. So I have some scripture set aside that I would like to read um, and feel free to um, to look this up on your own as I'm reading it but I'm just going to go through and read the parts about fornication uh, specifically all right because just because society tells you it's okay to have sex outside of marriage and it's actually you know kind of encouraged and you know high fives and oh did you get that one or how was it was it good blah 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 Dude, that's all lies from the devil. So you need to know God's truth because you will be judged. All of us will be judged for our actions. So this is what God says about sex outside of marriage. I'm going to Galatians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. So right there, God is telling you, if you're feeding your flesh, you're not living by the Spirit. And if you're living by the Spirit, you're not feeding your flesh, because they war against each other. They, they fight each other all the time. You can feed your flesh, or you can feed your spirit. It's your choice. Um, and it also says, so that you do not do the things that you wish, because we're not allowed to just go around doing what we want. I mean, yes, we have free will. We certainly can, but it comes with consequences. And let me tell you, there is not a single sin on this planet that is worth hell. Not a single one. I don't care what it is. It ain't worth hell. Trust me. Um, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are, and I'm going to give you a big old list of things, all right? Um, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, 
idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, I mean, it's, dude, it's, it's important to know the truth because otherwise you're just being led astray with the lies, okay? So if you practice any of these things, which by the way, when I first read this, I was like, dude, I'm in trouble because I already know I'm on like five of those things. Like, that's me. So I had to look up the definitions of, I think like three or four other ones. And I was also those things. So look up the definitions, see if you are one of those things. Uh, chances are you are because we're all fleshy and we're all wicked and we're all human and we all need a savior because ain't none of us perfect. But anyways, so if you practice these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. These are people that willfully practice, that do it on a regular and that are totally okay with it. All right, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, moving on to the next section. Ephesians 5, chapter 5, verse 3 through 7. Ephesians 5, 3 through 7. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. So that means if you're walking with the Lord, you got no business practicing this stuff. If you're practicing this stuff, then you're not walking with the Lord, plain and simple. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. So that means if you have a filthy mouth, which by the way, I, I used to like take pride in my filthy mouth and now it's totally cleaned up, all glory to God. Um, foolish talking, coarse jesting, which is like joking around in a vulgar way. It's not fitting, but instead give thanks. In everything that you do, give thanks, be, be praiseworthy. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. There it is again. If you practice these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Okay, so once again. It says plain and simple, and it gives you a list of things not to do because these people will not have an inheritance with the kingdom of God. All right, so if you're following along, we're going to go to the next part. Colossians 3, um, chapter 3, um, verse 2 through 10. Okay, Colossians 3, 2 through 10. Set your mind on the things above not in the things of this earth. Right there, that's telling you, if the earth is telling you this is awesome, if the world is telling you this is awesome, you should do this, it's probably a good key not to listen, all right? It's not a, It's not true, it's a lie. Do not set your mind on the things on the earth, but instead the things above. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ, which means we have to die with Christ. We have to die to our old selves and be living with Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So that means when he returns, if we're living right and we're not living like, like a heathen in the world, we will be heirs of the kingdom of God. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. There it is again. You know, the Bible is very clear. It warns us over and over and over. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Yep, that was me. I once, once upon a time, I used to do all these things and I was proud of it. If I can wear a t-shirt that said, I'm gross and I'm filthy and I'm easy and take me to bed, I would. You know why? Because it made me feel like I was accepted, like I was... Uh, admired, like I was desired, right? But that's all lies from the devil because we are worth more than that. But anyways, moving on. Uh, but now that you yourselves are put off, hold on, I lost my spot. In, you, in which you yourselves once walked but you when you lived in them, but now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, 
since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So that's saying, yeah, once upon a time you used to live in the world, you used to act like a heathen like everybody else and get high fives every time you did something stupid or gross or vulgar. But now that we are with Christ, we are not to continue that way. You know, Christ did not shed his blood and go through all that torture so we can continue in sin. He did it so he can set us free from the bondage of sin and be set free and that those who actually love him and, and seek the kingdom of God would now turn from sin, repent, and have remission of sin. But anyways, let's move on. The next section is 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse... 8 through 10. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy and the profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So basically it says, you know, God created the law, you know, the Ten Commandments, which is like the moral law. It's written in our heart via our conscience. I mean, we know when something's right or wrong, but we choose to do it anyways. Well, that's kind of God downloading information like, you know, it's wrong because, you know, we are created in his image and he gave us our spirit. So anyways, if you are on any of this list of things, that is contrary to sound doctrine. So get off those things. And I love you. Uh, next is Hebrews. Oh, I almost skipped it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 through 17. Hebrews 12, 14 through 17. And this is hard for me. Like when I got saved and I really started walking with the Lord and, and left all my sins and all my yucky stuff behind me, this first part, I... I really, I really still struggle with on a daily, like I'm always surrendering it to the Lord. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Right out the gate. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which none will see the Lord. So if you've got, an, and that's why the, the Bible talks about if you hate your brother, then Christ is not in you, you know, because we're supposed to love everyone. So pursue peace with all people without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. You don't want to fall short of the grace of God. Without grace and without mercy, you are screwed. So make sure that you are always in God's will, always in God's grace. The Bible is specific in warning us. God gives us this stuff, not because he's trying to make our lives boring and all that stuff. He's trying to warn us. He's trying to give us instructions on what to do and what not to do. So it's important to read his word. Uh, verse 16. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Back to verse 15. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. So becoming defiled means like you were washed clean, but then you just mucked yourself up again. So you have to that's why forgiveness is so important. The Bible says, if you don't forgive others, how is God going to forgive you? I mean, for all the things we have done, if we want forgiveness, we have to forgive others. And also not letting bitterness take root because that's just another tactic of the enemy. But I'll get into that in another video. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, which is in the Old Testament, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he fought no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. So that saying, it's talking about Esau. He's saying that he traded his birthright just for some food. It's talking about fornicator, profane person, not living at peace with people, letting bitterness take root. Like these are all things that you are going to trade in your birthright. Like God gives us mercy, but not so that we can keep acting a fool. You know what I mean? Like we're all foolish. All of us. I am too. I'm always like, Lord, help me because I suck. I need you. I need more, more of you, less of me. So it's important to read this word, you guys. Uh, the next part is Hebrews chapter 13, verse four and five. So it says marriage is honorable among all. So God intended for sex to be 
within the confines of marriage. You know, since the beginning, when Adam and Eve, you know, he talked about, you know, two becoming one flesh and nothing dividing that. And it's not, and we'll talk about this in another video, but it's because there is spiritual consequences if you do not obey God's law. But anyways, marriage is honorable among all and the bed is undefiled. So if you're married and you're, you know, doing your thing because you're married, that's okay. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So right there, it's saying, unless you're married, you got no business having sex with people because God will judge you. Even if you believe in Christ, even if you've accepted Christ as your savior, you cannot continue living against God's will and be in his grace and remain in his grace. Like it said over in chapter Hebrews chapter 12, um, verse 15, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. So don't fall short of the grace of God. Um, back to chapter 13, verse five, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. All right. So those are some scriptures that I have on fornication. I have, I have tons of other scriptures, but I just want to talk about fornication tonight. Um, I also want to talk about temptation because even though we receive Christ in our heart, we are gonna, excuse me, we're going to come against temptation. I mean, Satan is a liar and he will tempt you in any which way he can. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your soft spots and he will dangle them in front of you. Anytime you start to walk towards the light, Satan's going to try to pull you back towards the darkness. And it's a spiritual battle. You have to know this. Okay. Every second of your life, God and the devil are both fighting for your soul constantly. Okay. You have to choose God. Let go of sin. Let go of the world. Um, so here is some scripture about temptation. And this is in James chapter 1. Um, Verse 12 through 13, blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Okay. Blessed is, and it says man, but it means woman too. Blessed are they who endure temptation for when he has been approved, they will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. And this is what I'm talking about. When you love the Lord, like when you really love, you want to obey, you want to serve, you want to be obedient. You want to give your all to him because you love him. Not just believe he exists in a far. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Jesus. All right, let's go to the club. You want to come over to my place? You know what I mean? Like that is, that's so the devil. The devil wants you to do that. God does not want you to do that because he has better plans for you and it does not involve sin. Uh, verse 13, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. So when you endure temptation, you better believe this is not God testing you. This is the enemy trying to trick you. And God's up there watching to see what you're going to do. He knows the enemy's going to tempt you. He gave us free will to choose. That's why you have to read his word and know the truth. So you don't fall for the lies of the enemy. All right. Um, and then I want to read a couple more scriptures and then I'm going to wrap it up. I've already gone over the time that I want to spend. Um, Revelation chapter 21, verse seven and eight. And this is, this is talking about like the end of days, like after the tribulation and after the seven horns are blown and the bowls of heaven are spilled out and all the horrible things that are going to happen on this earth, which by the way, we are in end days. So like, it's important to get off the fence, you know, quit living in the world and, and wanting to go to heaven. You got to choose, yo. You know, it says in, in Revelation that it, because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. He doesn't want no half-hearted, well, yeah, I, I kind of want like the rewards, but I don't want to do any of the hard work. You know, I just want to be left alone. You know, no, he ain't looking for that. He's looking for people that love him. And it talks all throughout the Bible about loving the Lord. But anyways, I continue. Um, Revelation 21, seven and eight, he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So I want to touch on a couple points there. So we're all going to die. Our, our bodies are going to die, but spirits, they can't die. The spirits live on like spirits. You're either going to live forever in heaven or you're going to, you're going to die forever in hell. Okay. You, you, it's like death. It's like you're being killed 24 seven 
over and over and over, being killed. And you can feel all of it. So that's why they call it the second death, okay? Hell isn't like, oh, it's like, you know, it's dark and it's hot. No, it's like you're being tortured constantly. And I'll go over into details about all the things I've learned from people's hell testimonies. But anyways, I want to point out a couple more things. So he that overcomes shall inherit all things. Once again, it's talking about overcoming temptation, overcoming the lust of the world, overcoming the, the idolatry and everything, you know, self, self, self. What do I want? Selfishness and, you know, everything that our flesh wants. When you overcome that and you follow Christ and you pick up your cross and you follow him daily, then you will receive the reward of eternal life. Now, in no way, shape, or form can we ourselves, I am not saying that we earn our way into heaven, but I'm saying God judges the heart. He knows those who really want it and who really are dying to self, and they know that sin is like, the Bible talks about sin being, um, it's like watching a dog vomit and then lick the vomit up and eat it again. That's how gross sin is to God. Like, one lie, okay? Like, even all the sins, we think a lie is like no big deal and murdering is a really big deal, right? But in God's eyes, it's all disgusting. So when we realize how important sin is, like how gross it is in God's eyes and we love God and we want to serve God, then we choose to not want any desire with that. Anyways, moving on. Um, so it says, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. Okay. Do you notice how unbelieving is in there? It's in a category, a category to be punished. Okay. So that doesn't mean if you're an unbeliever and you're sexually immoral, if you're an unbeliever and you commit murder, if you're an unbeliever and you're a coward, then you will, you will suffer in hell. No, if you are a coward or if you are unbelieving, or if you are abominable, or if you are a murderer, or if you are sexually immoral, or if you're a sorcerer, if you're into witchcraft and, and uh, new age and spiritualism, we'll get into that in another one. Um, idolaters, meaning putting anything above God, and I'll get into that in another video too. And all liars. So if you lie and it just floats off your tongue and you have no problem with it, if you're in any of these categories, you're going... And it's not going to be good. It's going to be worse than you can even imagine, okay? So it's not just for unbelievers that sin. It's for sinners and unbelievers, like those who have no problem, no qualms with sinning, all right? On to the last one. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 and 15, okay? Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. So once again, it gives you a list. And if you do those things, if you fall into that list, under that category, you better repent. You have to repent, okay? God wants people who love him, people who serve him, not just people who believe he exists and then go about living in sin and living like the devil, all right? So check your heart. Make sure that you are obedient to God. Now, when I first started walking with the Lord, not everything just fell off at once, okay? It's not like everything was just stripped and gone. I had, to, as I read the Bible and as I learned, like, this is bad and this is bad and this is bad and this is bad. And I was like, dang, dude, I'm in all these categories. Like, I didn't even know I was so screwed up. Like, dude, I was wicked. Like, I thought I was cool. I thought I was a cool chick. I really did. And then I read the Bible and I realized, no, you're full of demons. You're full of the devil and you have to repent and you have to leave your sinful life. So... And after that, after a while, I've been walking with the Lord for two and a half years and, and, you know, all my flesh sins are gone, but I still struggle with heart sins. So, you know, he does, he's such a good and faithful father, you know, he loves us and he, he allows one layer of an onion to be peeled off at a time, you know, this, okay, now that's gone. What else? What else needs to change father? This, okay. What else needs to change? Okay. This, and then, you know, and that's having a relationship, you know, when you, it's like, it's like having a relationship with someone, you know, there's trust, there's intimacy, there's closeness, there's, um, there's open communication, you know, not just doing whatever you want and like, oh, sorry, you got to deal with it, whatever. You know, that's not a relationship. But God wants relationship with us. He wants us to know him as much as he knows us. I mean, he knows all the bad stuff about us and he still loves us. He still wants us to come home. He still wants us to receive his free gift 
of eternal life, which is through Jesus. And if you're not covered by the blood, then you're in big trouble. Okay. Like, and I mean, I don't mean like you believe Jesus exists. Like, I mean, you're under the blood. Like you have received, you have repented of your sins. You realize that you're a hot mess and there's no way that you in your, on your best day could please God. And you know that you need Jesus. You need him to change you because you can't do it on your own. Then the Holy Spirit enters you and you start to, you know, change from the inside out. And that's only the Holy Spirit that does it. That is not by my strength. I allow the, I say, okay, Holy Spirit, come in, change me. You know, God waits for us to invite him in. He doesn't force his way in. We have to invite him in and we have to move ourselves out of the way and let him do the work within us. Okay. So anyways, this video is just on fornication, which like I said, I had plenty of before I started walking with the Lord. Now I walk in purity and I, I just encourage you guys to read your Bible because like I said, if you don't know the truth, you will fi you will fall for any lie that the devil tells you and he will continue to lie to you. Even as you learn the truth, he's going to attack you in other ways. So make sure you have your armor of God on, make sure you're prayed up, make sure you seek God above all else and forsake your ways. I love you guys. And I just, I want to, I want to just break down the lies of the, of the enemy that has just blanketed this world. Okay. Because so many are perishing and I want to see all of you guys in heaven. I love you. Be encouraged. Bye guys.